Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Welcome back. And those of you that are new, welcome. This is part two of the congressional hearings with the former Twitter employees and executives on the Hunter Biden laptop and other things that were done prior to the 2020 election by Twitter and other social media companies to basically interfere with the presidential election of 2020. Let's uh, let's listen on. If you want to see part one, I'll leave it in the comments section pinned. Mr. Roth, um, have you communicated with government officials ever on a platform called JIRA? Yes or no? Real quick answer. We are, we're on the clock. Not yes to no? the best of my recollection. Not no. to your recollection. Now, they always say this, not the best of my recollection, which means I could have forgot, but that way you can't give me for lying under oath. Collection? Great. Have, if you did in the event communicate, who would have had access to this platform? That's the nature of my confusion. Okay. Jira did you ever speak to government officials on JIRA regarding taking down social media posts? Again, not to the best of my recollection. Can you explain to me why the federal government would ever have interest in communicating through JIRA, mind you, a private cloud server with social media companies without oversight to censor American voices? I want to let you know that this is a violation of the First Amendment, and the federal government is colluding with social media companies to censor Americans. Mr. Chairman, I ask for unanimous consent to submit these graphics into record. And Mr. Roth, I'm going to refresh your memory for I love this. It's like you're like a prosecutor in a way. You don't ask a question unless you already know what the answer is. And of course she does. For you, this flow chart Without behind objection, you. Thank you, Chair. Um, this flow chart shows the following federal agencies, social media companies, Twitter, leftist nonprofits, and organizations communicating regarding their version of misinformation using JIRA, a private cloud server. On this chart, I want to annotate that the Department of Homeland Security, which has the following branches, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, also known as CISA, count, um, Countering Foreign Intelligence Task Force, now known as the Misinfo, Disinfo, and Malinformation, MDM. This was, again, used against the American people, the Association of State Election Directors, NASED. And in this case, because there are other social media companies involved, Twitter. What do all of these groups, though, have in common? And I'm going to, again, refresh your memory. They were all communicating on a private cloud server known as JIRA. Now, the screenshot behind, uh, screenshot behind me, which is an example of one of thousands, shows on November 3rd. They're just showing all the nonprofits and all the organizations that were involved in trying to, I'll say, interfere, for lack of a better term, in the 2020 election. I have to be careful here on YouTube because I'm under a 90 day strike. And so that weight is hanging over my head. Let's listen on. On November 3rd, 2020, that you, Mr. Roth, a Twitter employee were exchanging communications on JIRA, a private cloud server with CISA, NASS, NAS, NASED, and Alex Stamos, who now works at Stanford and is a former security, of, um, security officer at Facebook to remove a posting. Do you now remember communicating on a private cloud server to remove a posting? Yes or no? I wouldn't agree with the characterization. I don't care if you agree. This, Do you, I don't this agree is, with the this characterization. Is your stuff. Yes or no, did you communicate with a private entity, the government agency, on a private cloud server, yes or no? The question was if I could. Yes or no. Yeah, I'm on time. Yes or no? Ma'am, I don't believe I can give you a yes or no. Well, I'm going to tell question. you right now that you did, and we have proof of it. Yep, there you go. I can't give you a yes or no answer. Well, why not? She's got the evidence right there. You can see the communications. These people belong in jail. This, ladies and gentlemen, is joint action between the federal government and a private company to censor and violate the First Amendment. This is also known, and I'm so glad that there's many attorneys on this panel, joint state actors. It's highly illegal. You are all engaged in this action, and I want you to know that you will be all held accountable. Ms. Gaddy, are you still on CISA's Cybersecurity Advisory Council? Yes or no? Yes, I am. Okay. 
For those who have said that this is a pointless hearing, and I just want to let you guys all know, we found that Twitter was indeed communicating with the federal government to censor Americans. I'd like to remind you that this was all in place before January 6th. So, so to say that these mechanisms weren't in place and to make it about January 6th, I want to let you know that you guys were actually in control of all of the content, and clearly we have proof of that. And there you have it. Let's, uh, let's see some more. Twitter's contact with FBI was constant and pervasive, as if it were a subsidiary. Now, I want to better understand why he would suggest that. Why would he suggest that? Because it was. Because they were working together. Now, Twitter used the guys that were just trying to clean up the Internet with misinformation, and we were told by the intelligence agencies that this was misinformation. We had 51 former security experts saying this has all the earmarks of a Russian misinformation campaign. They're all working on the same page, and Twitter knew what they were doing and pretended like, well, we're just doing the patriotic thing when they knew the Hunter Biden laptop story and other things had to be killed. Let's listen on. Mr. Roth, while at Twitter, how many meetings did you have with the FBI? I couldn't say for sure, but I More would than say 10? That's a reasonable More than 20? estimate. I couldn't say for sure. More than 50? That seems a bit high. Many meetings with the FBI. Well, we know uh, uh, how many FBI agents worked at Twitter while you were there? I don't believe any active FBI Former agents. Former FBI agents. How many worked there while you were there? I'm aware of perhaps two. Well, we know of at least nine um, because they started the BU group chat, BU for Bureau. Now, Mr. Roth, did the FBI ever ask you to share information like users' communication data without going through proper legal channels? No, they did not. And I would have refused if they had. Um, that's correct. I see that you denied Agent Chan's request for access to Twitter's data feed. What's sick isn't that you would deny it. Uh, it's that the FBI would even ask you for the private data of American citizens. With now, that's, that's the long and the short of it. Now, Mr. Roth can rightfully say he denied it, but I think he knew in the back of his mind how Twitter works, and he knew they would get access to things they shouldn't have access to without a subpoena or a court order. So he can look innocent for it. Let's listen on. Without going through legal channels of the law. Now, I want to remind you, Mr. Roth, that you are under oath. Did the FBI ever ask you to do anything that was illegal or questionably legal? I'm not a lawyer, but certainly not to the best of my recollection or knowledge. Now from the I'm not a lawyer. Well, when they asked the Supreme Court justice candidate what a woman was, she says, I can't say because I'm not a biologist. Look at the look on his face. He's, he's, he got caught. He's caught. It's amazing to me. Let's listen on. In the hearing that I've been a part of today, um, it's almost impossible to tell where the FBI ends and where Twitter begins. We have Mr. Baker here, a former FBI agent, and there seems to be a revolving door between the FBI and Twitter itself. Um, even Mr. Baker said that there was no collusion with the federal government and Twitter. But Mr. Baker, that's you. You are the collusion between the federal government and the FBI. And now with it, this is such a problem because we're seeing censorship all over. Mr. Roth, Ms. Gaddy, did either of you approve the shadow banning of my account at Lauren Boebert? Yes or no? No, I did not. Not to the best of my recollection. Well, she is head of security. Somebody's high profile is Congress member Boebert. They would have come went across her desk. Now, that shadow blanking they're referring to, you can't prove. It didn't exist. This is where she goes to jail. She said under oath that shadow blanking isn't done in the last congressional hearings. And we all know that's not true. And look at a look on their faces. They know they're in trouble. But will they be prosecuted and go to jail? We'll see. Let me refresh your memory, because on March 12th, 2021, and Mr. Roth, I know you looked at it, because...
fascist Twitter 1.0 had a public interest exceptions policy, which means for members of Congress to be shadow banned, it had to go before you, Mr. Roth. So I'll ask again, did you shadow ban my account? Yes or no? Again, not to the best of my recollection. So the answer is, Mr. Roth, yes, you did. I found out last night from Twitter staff that you suppressed my account for this tweet. It's a freaking joke about Hillary Clinton being angry that she couldn't rig her election. It's a joke. But in response, being the sinister overlords that you all are, you placed a 90-day account filter so I could not be found. And now we see here that Twitter staff said... And they're doing it to congressional members. What about little channels like mine that are now currently under a strike? I'm not trying to go to war with YouTube or any other social media. I just want you guys to see that the walls are closing in. Change. Let, let freedom reign, so to speak. Let the First Amendment work its magic that it does. Because you're going to be on the losing end of this in history. Change now before it's too late. Before Congress goes through and busts you guys all up into many companies and takes Section 230 and either gets rid of it, which will put you out of business in a week, or put so many caveats in it that you guys will be hamstrung forever. Change now before you're made to change. The visibility filter on my account excluded me from top searches, prevented notifications for non-followers, and much more. This is considered an aggressive visibility filter. You silenced members of Congress from communicating with their constituents. You, you silenced me from communicating with the American people over a freaking joke. Now, who the hell do you think that you are? Election interference? Yeah, I would say that that was taking place because of you four sitting here. The Hunter Biden laptop story was suppressed. A sitting member of Congress was suppressed. A, a sitting president was banned from Twitter. You know, I bet that Putin is sitting in the Kremlin wishing he had as much election intervention interference as you four here today. We've heard about threats to democracy. Well, what about shutting down a duly elected member of Congress? This is fundamental to our nation's governance. Now, you may not agree with everything she says and does. But there's nothing that she just said that's not true. Nothing. And if they'll do it to a sitting member of Congress, if they'll ban a sitting U.S. president, what the heck do you think they care about you? And you all attacked that very foundation 230 protections well those are for publishers not for editors and it's clear you were not acting as publishers you were acting as editors and mr chairman i think it's far past time that we remove 230 protections for for big tech platforms who are abusing this protection exactly right now she might have misworded a little bit what they've what what it does is they're really a platform and when they pick and choose winners and losers, and based on their ideology, they become publishers. And when they become publishers, they can be sued. And Section 230 protections do not apply. I think that's what she meant. And she's right. They throw out Section 230. You guys are in deep crap. This website and all social media in general, all websites are in trouble. You guys misuse your privilege. You got waivers from Congress not to be sued for content, but you decided I'm gonna be a publisher and a platform and we're gonna punish people that we don't like their politics or their ideology. And it's been done over and over everywhere. And let me just say, I'm not angry for myself. I'm not angry because I was silenced. I can reach out to Elon and to his staff and I can see what's happened. And I can sit here today and hold you all in account. I am angry for the millions of Americans who were silenced because of your decisions, because of your actions, because of your collusion with the federal government. They can't reach out to Elon. They can't sit here today and hold you into account. We don't know where the FBI ends and Twitter begins. And there it is. And there it is. That's the long and the short of it. You might not like her approach. You might not like her style, but there's nothing she said that wasn't true. 
Now let's let's uh, listen on to some other testimony. Now let's listen to Marjorie Taylor Greene. You thought Bobert was mad. Let's listen on. Mr. Baker, Ms. Gaddy, Mr. Roth, and Ms. Navaroli, you can consider your speech canceled during my time because you canceled mine. You see, you permanently banned my personal Twitter account, and it was my campaign account also. So let's talk about election interference, shall we? January 2nd, 2002, you permanently banned my Twitter account. This was the account that I would put my campaign ads on, raise money on, fight back when attacked with lies, and be able to talk to my voters in my district. But you banned it. And then let me explain. My account was not reinstated until November 21st, 2022. That was after my election on November 8th. You know, at your company, or your former company, where you worked, Twitter employees, over 98% of them, donate to Democrats. So while you coordinated with DHS, the FBI, the CIA, our government, and outside groups to permanently ban, shadow ban, conservative Americans and candidates like me and the former president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump, you were censoring and wrongfully violating our First Amendment free speech rights. Now, those of you that think that that's not true, they're a private company. Okay, take away the Section 230 protections. Then you can publish, and you can ban, and you can censor all you want. She's outraged, and frankly, I don't blame her. I don't blame her. She was running for Congress. She might not like her politics. You might not like some of the things she said in the past. That's immaterial. You can't have Section 230 protections and be a publisher and a censor at the same time. Guess what? None of you hold security clearances. None of you are elected. And none of you represent 750,000 people like I do. Let's explain. 52 United States Law 10101. No person shall intimidate, threaten, coerce, or attempt to stop any other person for the purpose of interfering with their rights to vote or to vote as he may choose. You didn't shadow ban or permanently ban my Democrat opponent. No, you did that to me. See, the long and the short of it is these people never thought ever in their wildest dreams that they would be in this position where the Republicans would be control of the House and they would be under oath during congressional hearings. They never thought this would happen. Once Trump was gone, they got what they wanted. The fact of the matter is, is very similar to the old analogy. It's a dog chasing a car. Well, what happens when the dog catches the car? He doesn't know what to do. And that's the spot they're in now. Nor would they ever thought that Twitter would be bought by anybody, especially Elon Musk. And now here they are. And I hope they go to jail and that was wrong, and it was against the law. You see, not only that, was it, a, was it me that you violated my First Amendment rights? You violated countless conservative Americans. These were doctors that were trying to tell the truth about COVID that you all would not allow to be talked about on your platform. These were parents complaining about their school boards, teaching gender lies in their schools, biological males entering their daughter's bathrooms, and sports before the 2020 election. On Twitter, you abuse the power of a large corporation, big tech, to censor Americans. And you wanna know something? Guess what? I'm so glad that you're censored down. I'm so glad you've lost your jobs. Thank God Elon, Elon Musk bought Twitter. And you know what? Let's talk about something a little bit further. It's amazing to me, Mr. Roth, as the head and trust of safety at Twitter, your ability, or should I say inability, to remove child porn. Now here's something that disgusts me about you. Before we go on, I wanna say I had to heavily edit this part because she referred to things like COIVD and also the election of 2020 and being I'm under a 90 day strike that's hanging over my head for an unfair uh, video removal, I had to edit this 
quite a bit, actually, just so you know. If you see it chopped up, that's why. In your det- doctoral dissertation entitled Gay Data, you argued that minors should have access to Grinder, an adult male gay hookup app. Minors? Really? You know, Elon Musk took over Twitter and he banned 44,000 accounts that were promoting child porn. You permanently banned my Twitter account. Twitter had become a platform, you said, connecting queer young adults. You also wrote on Twitter in 2010, can high school students ever meaningfully consent to sex with their teachers? There you have it. I'm not going to go into a lot of this detail. So, unfortunately, like I said, I'm under a cloud. But you get the general idea. So let's check out some more testimony here. I know this video was long and part one was long, but this is worth it. Now we're going to see some more testimony here concerning the New York Post story and what they did to kill it. Just mere minutes or hours after the New York Post published its story on the Hunter Biden laptop, uh, at 8.51 a.m., you sent a message to a team part of your team, I assume, and you said, it isn't clearly violative of our hacked materials policy, referring to the story, nor is it clearly in violation of anything else. Do you remember sending that message? Thank you for the question, Congressman. I don't recall that message specifically, but that does sound like my judgment on that day, yes. Okay, so that was early on in the day, and yet uh, shortly thereafter, Kaylee McEnany, White House Press Secretary's uh, not only did they ban the White House press secretary, members of Congress like you saw earlier, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Representative Boebert, and dozens and dozens of others of either running for Congress or duly elected congressional members, and the President of the United States. These people think they can do anything they want to whenever they want to. And they've lied under oath, in my opinion. When I hope and pray that these people are brought to justice, I like to see the prosecutions done. And what's going to happen is one of these people are going to cave and they're going to spill the beans to save their own behinds. Let's listen on. Her, her account was locked. Um, so an inquiry was made the next day by a person named Carolyn Strom. You know Carolyn Strom? Yes, sir, I do. Yeah, Carolyn Strom asked, what's going on here? And somebody named Elaine Ong Soto said, the user was bounced by site integrity for violating our hacked materials policy. Do you remember that incident? Yes, sir, I do. And somebody named Trenton Kennedy said, I'm struggling to understand the policy basis for marking this as unsafe. And I think the best explainability argument, now that may be a technical term for you, but for me it looks like, uh, we're, we're trying to create a narrative here to cover our butt. The best explainability argument for this externally will be that we're waiting to understand that this story is the result of hacked materials. Do you- they knew it wasn't hacked materials, the Biden Hunter laptop. They knew that. They all knew it. But they said the intelligence service, the FBI, and former FBI intelligence service officers that now work for Twitter were telling them that it had all the earmarks of Russian misinformation. They really knew it wasn't hacked or misinformation, but they wanted it down and they saw a way to say, okay, we'll be patriotic Americans and we'll take it down and we'll ban people. They did it willingly, knowing it was wrong. You remember Mr. Kennedy's communication? Yes, I do. Yeah. And so then we get into uh, a whole series of things uh, written by Mr. Baker going back and forth. And he says on that same day, now at 926, which is about a half an hour after the, your, your uh, statement that you don't think that anything's been violated here, he says, I've seen some reliable cybersecurity folks question the authenticity of the emails in another way. And then you seem to uh, later, but by the way, that's almost inconceivable. I mean, it just seems inconceivable um, that that would have happened so quickly that he would would have that. And then you... Yeah, that's a good point. 
How would they have that information? Like, what was it, half an hour, an hour? This was a setup from the beginning. You sent out something uh, right after that that said, the key factor in forming our approach is consensus from experts monitoring election security and disinformation that this looks a lot like a hack and leak that learned, uh, that learned from the 2016 WikiLeaks approach. I'm wondering if you can name for me today any of the experts that seem to have a consensus at 10, 12 a.m. on the morning of October 14th that you put out saying that we're going to rely on some, uh, some group of experts. Who were they? Thank you for the question. Twitter did not give me access to any of my documents or emails to prepare for this hearing, and so unfortunately I can't give you a direct answer. Oh, man, what a beautiful out. Who are these experts? There weren't any. It was the FBI telling them and intelligence agencies and higher-ups in Twitter and yourself included who called the administration in the White House when Trump was president, called them Nazis. Yeah, look how worried you are, and you should be. I hope you go to jail. Were there, Mr. Roth, were, were there experts? Were there, were there people that you consulted that were cybersecurity experts between uh, 9 a.m. and 10.15 a.m.? on that day? My recollection is that we were following discussions about this incident as they unfolded on Twitter. So cybersecurity experts were tweeting about this incident and sharing their perspectives, and that informed some of Twitter's judgment here. But I want to emphasize, as I said in my statement, I didn't think that the evidence or those perspectives warranted removal. And I add But you went along with it. You went along with it, knowing it was wrong. You may even work behind the scenes to get it removed. Advocated against taking that action. I, I understand. Let's, let's look at one other, one other document. Um, our teams made the determination that, mater that the materials fall under our hacked materials policy. It's my understanding from reports and internal sources that normally a hacked material policy would require a, a, a government official or law enforcement determination that there had actually been a hacked uh, account before that hacked policy were to be in place or imposed. Is that accurate? No, sir, it's not. The so, oh. so the policy was, did not require that there be any kind of official finding by, the government, by a government source? No, there were a number of different types of evidence that we considered under the policy. Certainly government attribution would be a power. No, we were looking and we were looking and we were looking to hope that grab some straw to make sure that we could censor these people. That's what the real reality was. And we used the guys, intelligence service experts have told us, blah, 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 blah. Powerful one, but we you, also looked- So you weren't looking, that wasn't determinative is what we're saying. In that instance, we did not have any specific information from okay. any government source, no. I'm gonna read something that um, applies to this and several other things. From, from, your, from the, uh, the Twitter stack uh, that you guys had. This might be an unpopular opinion, but one of one-off ad hoc decisions like this that don't appear rooted in policy are, in my humble opinion, a slippery slope and reflect an alternatively equal, equally dictatorial problem. Quite frankly, that's what the essence of all four of your testimony, you, I, I realize you're trying to fight against it, but you exercised, you exercised an amazing amount of clout and power over the entire American electorate. And that is absolutely correct. An amazing amount of power and influence. They had no business doing it. We're gonna see what happens. We have to believe in the justice system. It's certainly been tested in my mind, but we're gonna to have to see. Until next time, goodbye and good luck.